Our hearts beat to the city streets. We begin to feel the fire. We rise like tall buildings as the chemicals they take us higher. The night's young and it's just begun. As she puts her hand in mine. Right, well, another day in uh, Vietnam, and today, where are we, Chow? Where we're we going? My son. My son, but. We are not two today. We are not. We are... We are three. three. And I am not his son. <laughs> He's not my son, but yeah, I think he could be my father. <laughs> <laughs> so we are walking up to the My Son Temple. We came for a ride out. It's Tet Eve. That was really nice. And we took Waleed with us because, you know, like every day you have to do something towards care in the community. You have to help like an old person across the road, this sort of stuff. So we brought him with us today. And then, you know, we won't have to buy our drinks and food and everything. So that's okay. Okay, well, you can walk, but it's like two kilometers. So we're on the bus. Board another vessel. <laughs> what sort of vessel is this one? This is a lantern vessel. This is a lantern vessel, noted by the lanterns. So we are in the middle of Hoi An. It is Tet Eve. It is the 9th of January 2024. Look at it. It is absolutely rocking. January 2024, New Year's Day, Lunar New Year's Day, Tet in Vietnam. So we see lots of people out still, um, but most of the place is going to be closed today. But as you've just seen, the sky is looking a bit menacing. And look what I'm not joking, right? It's like it's got it's over 20 degrees here, right? And look, right, Cheryl's laughing, look, fleece, look, puffer jacket. Everything. I'm not going to survive in England, Barry. I'm not going to survive. I'm going to be dead in the cold. So we're off to have a look. We're going to go and try and go to Marble Mountain. Then we're going to look at the Dragon Bridge in Da Nang. And then hopefully we're also going to um, go up to Batnall Peak. But that's covered in cloud at the moment. So we're, we're not quite sure about that. But come with us and have a little ride out on New Year's Day. Might not be very exciting, but you know, at least I'll be warm with my coat on. 
So the ticket office is just down there on the left, just there. And in typical Asian style, there's somebody there. Look, so you can buy a ticket at that window there. And then this lady is collecting the tickets. So she's only like 10 yards away, give two people a job. And then just around the corner there, I'll show you the top of it afterwards, but that's the elevator. So it costs 50,000 to go up on the elevator. There's a massive queue going around the block for that. And Chesty likes nothing more than going up a few steps, do you Ches? <laughs> yeah, that's right. How smart's this? The famous Dragon Bridge, look. Stretches all the way across there. The dragon. There's the head there. Behind there. And then there's the park all round here with all the bits in it and everything. And then at night apparently, it spits fire out, I, I think a couple of times at night. <laughs> well we were going to go up to the top of uh, Catbo Peak but we got like three miles up there and then there's a sign saying automatic scooters prohibited beyond this point I think that's because uh, it must be really really steep by then so only um, normal scooters can um, make it so anyway at least you get to have a view of Denang there you go it's actually warmed up a bit now even though it is absolutely blowing a hooligan of a gale again now. Well, it's still a bit overcast today, um, but it's reasonably, it's, you know, it's good and mild still. Um, the sea is absolutely boiling still though from the winds of the last couple of days but um so we decided to come up to Denang and we're going to take a walk it's about seven and a half kilometers up all up the promenade right to the very end to the end of the beach cafe and then we're going to walk the seven and a half k's back just see what we can see it's a very low impact sort of day and we're also going to go um this evening at five o'clock we're going to go out for dinner with chuck Walid and Mark Brown who we met last night. So we're all going out for a meal, but it's just gonna be a low impact one at the uh, local cafe. So come and join us and we'll see a few sights. And it does look a little bit, Cheryl just said quite rightly, looks a bit like real in autumn. <laughs>
Is the morning update from the dentist. So, Chess has got, Chess has had a root canal done, but she didn't have a crown, and now the bit where the tuft from the root canal has cracked off. So, we have brought ourselves to the dentist here, which is a really nice dentist, and highly recommended to see what they can do about it. Um, and we'll let you know shortly what they say. Just to add to the total bizarreness of everything that goes on in Hoi An, right? So when we got to that dentist surgery, I just said to you, um, the lady was carrying out a New Year ritual, you know, the, and putting the incense sticks. And I told her about first footing in Scotland and in other parts of Britain, <coughs> where a, a man goes in through the front door, bringing in the New Year, walks round the house, and then takes out the old year with him through the back door. And she said, can you do that for me, please? You're the first man here. And I said, of course I can. So, right. So I walked around the whole dentist surgery. She took me to every room in every corner to gather up the old year, right? And to bring in the new year. And then I went out the back door and took the old year out with me. And then came back around to the front again. And she said like, oh, thank you so much, so much for that, right? I didn't know about this. And then she said that, I, I said, it's not a religious thing. Like it's just a, a, a tradition, like, a, a, um, you know, people believe in it. And she said, I, I, I understand it's not a religious ceremony, she says, but I could feel the power was strong. And I was like, oh my goodness, then, we said, how much is it to get a crown? And the update on the tough situation is, Cheryl needs a crown, right? Which would be like 750 quid in England, 150 quid here. So she's gonna have a porcelain crown done on two days time. Um, so, um, and a clean. And a clean. Yeah, she sneaked the clean in. How did you sneak the clean in? What, did the dentist recommend a clean? I don't think so. He snuck the clean in there. Um, anyway, so, um, and the lady said, thank you very much for, for carrying out that ceremony for me. 10% off. So if anybody wants to give us 10% off anything, I could come and carry out a quasi superstitious ceremony at your house for 10% off or any loose cash you have. <laughs> what about that? Right, let's get on and do our attractions. We're already at the first one. We're at the boat temple already. Nice. Come on, let's go. How cool is this? Look, the boat temple. This is the first one of the little attractions we've got to look at today. How cool is that? We there, me hearties. <laughs> Attractions. <laughs> Do you want to go to some attractions? Yes, please. <laughs> well, I'll take you to some attractions. Come with me. Cheers. You're visiting attractions. How do you like the attractions, <laughs> Gerald? <Gemma>? Good. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. The sea is still absolutely wild here. Um, we just come about 15 miles, 20 miles south of Hoi An. 
went round all them attractions which is absolutely beautiful um, and now we're right here at the sea but there's no way we're swimming in that beach is deserted like but there's no way we're swimming in that I don't know if it shows on the camera but it shelves off steeply and you can just see all of it washing back and in all different directions that's not going to be a good place for a man to swim without a lifeguard but the point of showing you this is right so there's the sea and it looks all all right but this is the grim reality of Asia right that if you ever come you're gonna have to get used to look at this this is what Asia is like everywhere that's not like manicured by um, you know companies or by the local council or something so in the towns and everything and the beaches and that you know people go around and clean them up generally or the businesses do or the council do or whatever but you know like look at all this this is left over from Tet this is but just generally there's just stuff like everywhere look And it's like, you know, this is what, this is, if you're coming out to Asia and you're going anywhere off the beaten track, this is what you've got to accept is, you know, the way it is. And I don't know, how do you change that? How do you change this? You've got to change the culture of the people. We're following people down the road who are just lobbing like drinks cartons out the window and everything. I mean, look at all this. It's just abandoned here, this is. Look. You know, look at all that. What do you do about it? I don't know. Um, but this hasn't all washed up from out of the sea. This is, you know, this is all local stuff. Most of this is local stuff that's just trashed here. Um, you know, and in a great big world of environment and pollution and this, that and the other, you're not going to make any difference by saving a bottle top or putting a carton in the recycling as long as all this stuff's going on. We're absolutely knackered as a race as long as this is going on look at it and this is look at it right off down that beach there look. this is what large parts of asia are like away from the mainstream anyway don't want to have a sad note i just wanted to make sure that you all knew what was like. so just by way of contrast this is us back at the beach near where we uh, where we're staying in hoi an that is beautifully manicured with a lot of uh, retail outlets Look at the difference here. Nervous. Dentist day. Dentist day. Right, so it's it's like it's travelling well it's like travelling day but not travelling day because we're going like only like three miles up the road to town. So that's absolutely fine to another hotel. Uh, there's a quick look at this room we've had here. It's been all right. It's not the best, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just all right. Um, and of course the hotel, as we already told you, was damp to start off with the other one. So we moved us here for nothing. This one's been all right. Breakfast has been fairly shocking. Um, but it's been okay and we're having more optimism about the other one and we're staying five more days in Hoi An now because we really enjoy it don't we yeah really so, really nice and Chesney's tooth as you already know needs a crown so she's going this morning to the dentist to get the crown it's moving day but it's not travelling day it's just driving moving up day. it's just driving up the road with two bags tied on the back of a moped day <laughs> let's see how that goes okay so this is the motorbike ready to go little bit of rope on here look that looks secure not so much that perfectly all right i think what do you think is good or bad yes very good very good yes. <laughs> very good <laughs> right right let's give it a try see if it all falls off very successful trip to the dentist smile ding how nice right so this is the new hotel we've moved to so i may as well quickly show you the room here which is here Nice bathroom there, which looks all good as far as I can see. Room smells fine, I think. Um, and it says pool view. I got you wouldn't want to be up here if you were scared of heights. I tell you now, man. Look at the height there. Pool view. It's a long way down to the pool, though. Wow, look at that. But what a beautiful view across the city as well. Look at that. How nice is that? That's quite cool, that. 
Now I'm going to get my wife to test the bed. Could you carry out a bed test, please, Cheryl? And uh, let us know the boing ability of it. Yes, better. Better? Yeah. Good. Is it a good soft one? Oh, it's a bit hard. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. Nice to have a balcony, though. All looks good. Not sure what that is. Doesn't feel damp, though. But that's okay. Ah, oh, so this is the fun to the new hotel. There's the pushy. Here's the reception. Look, how cool is that? It's really nice. Nice and spacious and airy. It's got like a little seating area here. Breakfast, the buffet breakfast in there, seven till 9.30, all included. And then round here, you've got a nice little garden area and pool. How smart is that? Look, look, pool towels as well, not basket to put them in when you're done. Very nice, I like this. And it's in quite a nice suburby area as well. It's quite quiet and um, all that big motorbike just went past. It's actually quite nice, look. How cool is that? We've got that room at the very, very top, which is even good. I really like that. Get an excellent view across the city. You can see right out, like 20 odd miles to Da Nang and everything. How cool is that? Nice. I like that. I like that hotel much better than the other one we was at. Oh God, look at the menu, it's so good. There's so many things on it, look. All these different things on it at this vegetarian restaurant. Right, that one there. Vegetarian restaurant in our new local surroundings. But the problem is that the indecisive woman is faced with too many nice choices, aren't you Jess? I you do that thing with your glasses where you arm your glasses ready to do something. <laughs> Go on, do that thing you do with your glasses where you put them on like this chest, right? Like that, that's it. What are we having then? Um, Try come back later when you've chose. I'm gonna have the pancakes at Our Lady because I really want, because I like the peanut sauce and I don't. Is that cow low? That's Hoi and Special Noodle. Yeah, cow low. Oh, yeah, okay. But it's got cow low. <laughs> So what's the what's the um, difference? I think that's got more juice in it and that's more sauteed. I'm gonna try that one. Sure? Yeah. And we'll have the other bit in the middle. Hmm. That'll be good? Yeah. Do you come and order at the bar here or does lady come? Seems she'll sure come. It's quite nice, I like this. So at 7 o'clock this morning, the music started up over there. I think it's some welcoming in the New Year ritual or something like that, because we're still in Tet Week. We are at the very end of it though. It looks like the table's all laid up over there for something, like some sort of meal or something. But the guy's banging drums and chanting and all sorts of stuff, you know, and they're not even good at karaoke round here, let alone anything else. Do you know what I mean? He's giving it his best shot. Oh my good God. That was actually a really good breakfast, wasn't it? It was. Like we had toast. Proper toast. I crunched it in my mouth. <laughs> right, where are we going friend? High Van Pass. High Van Pass. So this is one of them iconic passes that you have to go on a motorbike. So we're going to go there. It says on here 53 kilometres to get to the top of it. But to get to the top of it and come down the other side is about 65 kilometres. So it's about 45 miles to go all the way over it and down the other side and it's 45 miles back. But we're going on a day trip, so we'll come along, have a ride with us. It's gonna be a lot of bendy roads, a lot of beautiful scenery and everything. Should be all right, shouldn't it? Might not be as fun as Top Gear, though. <laughs> Might not be as fun as the Top. Top Gear did it in the, must be 90s. I, I watched it last night. Jeremy Clarkson hasn't looked that young for ages. So it might have been the 2000s, but it won't be as much fun as when they did it. <laughs> and we're not dressed the same as when they did it either, are we? So come with us and have a ride. It'll be a giggle, we can see some great sights, and we're not doing anything else. And what else have we done this morning, Cheryl? Go on. Uh, we booked flights to Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur? No, not north of Vietnam. Not where we were supposed to go, because it's raining, it's horrible, and it's 15 degrees. So we thought, oh, where else can we go? And then we thought, tell you what, it's only 59 quid to fly to Malaysia, so we're flying to Malaysia on in four Tuesday. days' time. 
to uh, go up the coast of Malaysia for four or five weeks and see what that's like because we did want to go north of Vietnam but the, the weather's like rubbish for the next few weeks and I don't want to be in 16 degrees trying to motorcycle an iconic pass just to say I've done it in the rain. I'm a beach man, I'm a beach boy, what are you Chevel? <laughs> You're a beach baby. Right let's get on this bike ride otherwise we'll never get there. Let's go man. Wow, level crossing, train coming. How cool is that? So whilst you have a look at the uh, footage of us going up the High Band Pass, this is what I know about it. Um, it's 21 kilometers long, 13 miles long, the actual twisty windy section is. It's along National Route 1 in Vietnam and it crosses over a peninsula of land that uh, juts out into the East Vietnam Sea. Um, it once separated the physical division between two kingdoms of Champa and Dai Viet. And the twisting road on the pass has long been a challenge for drivers traveling between the two cities. But now there's a, a high van tunnel uh, on the, on the um, landward side of the pass and uh, most of the trucks etc go through that. Uh, the only things that can't go through that are the petrol tankers which still uh, struggle their way up the mountainside because the, the, the fuel tankers are not allowed in the tunnel itself. Um, it's fairly mainstream now, as you can see from the footage, you know, there's loads of vehicles on it, loads of cars, buses and everything. So, you know, it's uh, not quite um, as dramatic as, as you might think. Or, and you know, you can ride it easy as pie, two up on a 125 scooter, a Honda Click or something like that. We've got Suzuki Impulse easiest pie you can ride up on that well that's where we just come over the mountains there and what better place to have your coffee have your morning coffee la macola mrs kempster <laughs> this is just how i planned it isn't it this yes, it is. yes just how i planned it exactly how it was yes so you should have seen the streets we just went to get here <laughs> i thought we were lost at one point in fact we were lost at one point so that Ivan Pass was great, you know, it was really good fun, wasn't it? Did you enjoy that? It we was. didn't even have to resort to coats. And I like going past the tankers. And the petrol <laughs> tankers. But anyway, we found this nice coffee spot here. It was great riding along the, the High Van Pass there. But you know what? It was it's a bit mainstream. There's lots of buses up there and cars and all things like that. And you know, we rode on that uh, you'll see a few weeks ago, we rode Chiang Mai to Pai. Now that was great. The road surface was absolutely fantastic, you know. This is 21 kilometers in total, this is. The Chiang Mai to Pai is 90 miles, of which about 50 of it at least are, you know, switchback bends. And that was just sustained. And it was just beautiful roads and beautiful, much tighter bends than this. And it was just, it was just a nicer ride. But this is still nonetheless enjoyable, isn't it? Right, what a great place to sit and have a Cochula Macola. Right, well, here we are in the airport, so it'll be a good time to end this uh, vlog on Hoi An, the second part. Um, we've had a great time in Hoi An, we've done some great stuff, been up Marble Mountain, My Son Temple, been down to the beach quite a few times, rode up to Da Nang, rode the Hoi Van Pass, etc. It's been a great time, we actually stayed two and a half weeks in the end. Uh, 11 days in the uh, slightly alright hotel and then five days in the Green Apple Hotel which has been absolutely fantastic. So today's moving day, we're at Da Nang Airport, we're flying to Kuala Lumpur, we were going north um, but the weather's not very good for the next few weeks so we've decided to go south so we're flying out to Kuala Lumpur um, and that'll be the end of this vlog and probably the start of the next vlog as well so um, yeah, we've got somewhere booked in Kuala Lumpur five nights, costing 200 quid because uh, Malaysia is not quite as cheap as we thought it might be. And um, we're certainly looking onwards, like staying on a couple of the islands and maybe going to Singapore, and that will take uh, expensive to new levels, I would have thought. Um, but still, um, last 
month now I think of our travel I think we've just um, yeah we've just that to rather frustratingly buy a ticket to get out of Malaysia into Singapore because they won't let you check in until you've got a ticket for onward travel and that's probably something you need to have a look at or to think about if you come in yourselves um, I know that that's a stipulation of most countries could have onward ticket but nobody really looks especially if you're traveling round but but these guys are apparently quite hot on it so we just had to buy like a 40 quid ticket we bought a flexible one on booking.com so we can change it anytime we want so we might look into that later on today as well right if there's anything exciting on the flight to see uh, then I'll show you if not next time join us Kuala Lumpur we've got a load of stuff to have a look at um, big busy vibrant city and we're staying on the 35th floor of the platinum tower suite with an infinity pool on the roof what's not to